Environment and Climate Change Canada launched a new national weather alert program. And in this video, I'm going to explain why they made the change, how it works, and what you need to know to prepare for the next extreme weather event. First off, this is a three-tiered color-coded system that is already being used in many countries around the world and is recommended by the World Meteorological Organization. Now, it's designed to better communicate weather information and weather warnings to the public so that the public can quickly understand the severity of an upcoming weather event and its risks so that they can better prepare for that event. So this is moving away from just forecasting what the weather will be to forecasting what the weather will do. This is called impact-based forecasting and it gives the, the public a much better understanding as to what to expect. Now each one of these colors will be associated to the current weather alert system which are your typical warnings, watches and advisories. But the color will be uh, sort of highlight the level of concern that the forecast Forecasters have for a specific event. So let's get into the details and I want to show you this matrix. This is what the meteorologists at Environment and Climate Change Canada will use to decide what color to associate to a specific weather event. Uh, there's a couple things that they take into account. One is the confidence uh, of their forecasters. Are they confident that this event will happen? Uh, higher being up above and then lower down below. The other is the impact and the impact is interesting because it's not just associated with the impact of that actual weather that's moving in, it also takes into account the conditions on the ground. So that's the exposure of an area or the vulnerability, for example. And the vulnerability could be, for example, saturated ground would be much more susceptible to a wind event because the roots from trees can come up a lot easier. That gives you an idea of some of the things that environment and climate change meteorologists are taking into account. Now, here's the first level. This is a color code that starts off with yellow alert, and this is the lowest on the scale. And this is hazardous weather may cause damage, disruption, or have health impacts. So may have these um, sort of impacts. And the impacts would be moderate, localized and short term and these are the most common so these are like your basic uh, rainfall warning in vancouver or a snowfall warning in toronto and here's an example of a yellow warning for wind uh, this is uh for example what you would get short-term utility outages large tree branches might be broken you can see in the image a bit of a branch is down on the ground and the risk of injury from falling debris is uh, uh, possible so this is a yellow warning wind. Now let's take it a step further to the orange uh, alert. This is more of a severe weather event that is actually likely going to cause significant damage, disruption, or health impacts. Now with an orange alert, the impacts would be major, more widespread, and they may last for a few days. And this type of an event does happen, but they are uncommon. So I think of weather warnings in Metro Vancouver, like a rainfall warning where we may have had some flooding, or it may have caused uh, a single landslide or a washout. That would be an example of an orange alert. Here's an orange alert warning for wind. And you can see in the image here, uh, a branch has come down. So this is widespread utility outages, some roof damage because the branches come down onto it, small to medium trees have been snapped, and there's an increased risk of injury in an orange warning for wind. Now, if we take it a step higher, this is the last or the highest on their levels, which is the red alert. These types of weather events are very very dangerous or potentially life-threatening. And with these, they are expected or they will cause extreme damage or disruption. And the impacts are extensive, widespread and prolonged. Now, these types of alerts are very rare. So some examples of a red alert would be a tornado warning, for example, as well as the 1998 ice storm in Ontario and Quebec that crippled transmission towers. Another example would be Snowmageddon in St. John's, Newfoundland in 2020 that buried the city or the 2021 atmospheric river in British Columbia that severely damaged the highways. And when it comes to wind warnings, this is what it would look like. Red warning wind. So long duration widespread utility outages and structural damage to buildings and homes. You can see in this image, for example, the tree has actually come down on the home. There's significant damage to that home, to the car and to the power line. So significant damage to trees and a high likelihood of injury. So this is 
is a major, major event. Now, the wording is going to change as well, or has changed. So the old system would have said a winter storm warning. Now they will always put the color first, yellow, orange, and red, and then the warning, or the uh, uh, watch or advisory will come second, and then what weather event it is associated with. Now, if you're wondering, why did the national government make this change? Well, here's Gerald Chang, a meteorologist from Environment and Climate Change Canada, to explain. Our climate is changing. There's no doubt about that. Uh, what we want to do now is to take action, uh, the next step. Um, and for us, how do we provide information better? Um, and it's through adopting a color-coded weather alert system. There are more events. For example, back in 2021, more than 600 people died uh, in the interior of BC because of the, the heat dome, for example. Um, you know, these things are happening. And, and a lot of these things, they weren't uh, exactly, they were well forecast, but it's the next step, how people understand the information and whether they take action to prevent something like that from happening. And that is why, um, you know, that the World Meteorological Organization is urging everyone to adopt a color-coded weather alert system so that people will respond to the information we give them. So the next time you receive a weather alert from Environment and Climate Change Canada, your weather app on your phone, or the meteorologists on TV, now you have a better understanding as to what these colors mean so that you can better prepare for the next extreme weather event.